Behold the Unspeakable is a saga enchantment for three, a blue and a blue. It has art from Jen Ravana Tran, where we see the kami of the unspeakable behind a waterfall and before it stands a human form. The forest is painted in traditional Japanese fashion, in which lies Jen's strength in my eyes. This is to have so many amazing styles. She shows us realistic paintings, she makes depictions of human grandeur or fabled artifacts that spring forth from the imagination. We will get back to this art later. The card itself is a saga enchantment that enters and then goes over its stories and the effects that come with it. It enters with its first lore counter, which triggers the first story. Let's go over the abilities and what they mean to the story before diving deep into the histories of the characters. Chapter 1 has all of the creatures you don't control lose to power. This is because of the effect of the Kami of the Unspeakable. Whoever is in the presence of the Unspeakable becomes at first enamored by the Kami and what it stands for. This is everything that should not be spoken about, seen, heard of and read about. In flatter and yet less pompous words, this is the Kami of deepest secrets. But we know that when we dive deeper than obsession, we become unable to see. And this is why the students that see this Kami succumb into madness. At your next upkeep or at whatever other moment you get your second lore counter, you draw four cards when you have one or zero cards in hand. Otherwise you scry and draw two. Why? Well, the deeper you get into secrets that should not be known, the more knowledge you seek. If you just start uncovering something powerful or juicy, you are at first cautious. You look around, you check th that no one sees you, so you scry to first. Then you draw a bit of knowledge, but when you were searching for the answer to the secret for years and you are almost there, then caution has gone months ago. You just draw any knowledge you can get about it. Chapter 3, like with all sagas from Neon Kamigawa, has you exile this saga to let it return, as a creature, with art from the same artist as always. This time, Jen Ravenna Tren, this art shows the kami emerging for the, from the behind of this waterfall, coming in almost clear sight. We see a creature that grows with how much you have learned. He becomes stronger with every secret that you snatched. The kami flies with its huge wings and tramples, as it is mostly large and dangerous. The flavor says, Even as her student's mind succumbed to madness, Azami's obsession with the kami of forbidden knowledge only grew. This brings us to the most interesting part of this card, Azami Ozu. Because why has she not succumbed to the madness herself, when she seems so obsessed? Azami herself, as we know her from her card, is a 2 blue blue and blue wizard creature. This 5 mana human is a 0-2 that helps you draw a card and only requires you to tap any wizard you control, which could be Azami herself. Her flavor says in a letter to Hisoka that Choices belong to those with the luxuries of time and distance. We have neither. I recommend we proceed with the plan to destroy all shrines of the Kami. See, Azami would do anything to protect her scrolls, and when the Kami started attacking her university and its library, Azami went rather crazy. You might wonder about Hisoka now too, which is legit. He has been the headmaster of Minamo University. His philosophy tells you a lot about this school, which is to search for knowledge and share it only when necessary. If you can keep a secret, keep it. Especially the secret of the Emperor stealing from a Kami, making the entire Kami world angry at the world, starting the Kami war. And with it, Minamo University was in danger as well, which was a secret Hisoka kept from even Azami. Now it is important to remember that there are things that even Azami did not know. Let's look at this Emmer cool spirit and think about Azami for a moment. She is a wizard now, but she used to be a curious girl. She wanted to know everything about the world and her mother had always had books about it. Still her mother would keep these books from Azami, not letting her read anything for all of her youth. When Azami met Akami, 
spirit for the first time. The kami asked her what she wanted to, which Azami answered, knowledge. And the kami promised it. Azami remembered the kami and never saw it again. But throughout her life, she felt like the kami manipulated her in seeking knowledge at all costs, even her friends, students, and their mother. When Azami came to hold the power over all scrolls and books in Minamo, she had a group find her old kami to study it, without, of course, telling them why. They returned with this small spirit that was mostly harmless and could only conjure up fish at first. It had grown over the years from feeding on Azami's thoughts, but it had never been strong at all. Being infused with all of Azami's obsessions, the kami became her familiar. More importantly, Azami had been obsessed with knowledge out of her own accord. To come back to the kami that cannot be spoken about, we have to look at Azami's vision about knowledge. We can learn this mostly from this one mana arcane instant that draws you a card. It says, No one part of the name, obsession begins. No two parts, paranoia sets in. No three parts, madness descends. Know all and only the kami know what will become of you. Now this seems almost to be about the kami of forbidden truths. But it is just Azami's learnings where she tells us that from knowing a forbidden name you begin with obsession, follow with a suspicion and then become mad from the long exposure to the name. When you see all those secrets of the world that were hidden behind the mists or the waterfall, you become mad with all that you have seen a sort of classical be careful what you wish for story. We should know that Azami is obsessed with knowledge now, but does not become mad yet. This has to do with the Kami of Forbidden Truth, because why do these students become mad? Well, Azami has become a lot like her mother in that she hoards secrets and scrolls from the other students. Her students, of course, some of the most curious wizards of Kamigawa, want to know these secrets. And the Kami of the Unspeakable feeds on this curiosity and these unknowable secrets. Whenever a student searches for Azami's secrets, they look for answers, become enamored with the aspect of forbidden knowledge and eventually will be driven mad to the point where they can only mumble out secrets that they have seen. Mostly only short sentences though, as no one can look at the Kami for too long. Azami herself keeps her secrets hidden, but even though she uses her maddened students to create a mystery that will draw in more students just to learn about the Kami of the Unspeakable, she does not have any other secrets unknown to herself that are known. Until we remember Hisoka, the headmaster of Minamo, who does have a very big secret about why the Kami attack of the people of Kamigawa. Now, we do not know for certain why Azami was never heard from again after the Kami war, but I suspect it is because she finally had a secret that she was not supposed to know about, meaning that she now finally, as well, was taken by the Kami of the Unspeakable. Behold the Unspeakable is a beautiful story about karma, where we see the aspects of secrets that should not be known which is held behind the veil of lies and misty water. It tells us about why secrets can drive someone mad and it tells us about how the Kami of Kamigawa are aspects of something and grow over time. Like Azami's familiar, but also like the Kami of Secrets, who grows with how many secrets you hold in your hand. I want to thank you for watching and why don't you tell us about something you have learned recently in the comments, just so that we do not feed any unwanted flying nightmare spirits. Thank you.